Have you ever thought about what it might be like to keep pet ants? Or maybe you think, ew, why would anyone find the idea of ant keeping appealing? Well, today, we'll take a quick break from our usual ant stories on this channel to teach you how to start, feed, house, grow, and care for your pet ant colony. And I promise by the end, you'll be an ant keeping pro and understand why millions of us ant keepers around the world have fallen in love with keeping ants as pets. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel Tutorial Edition. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC Fam. Enjoy. All right, so whether you're curious and wanted to get started in ant keeping, or you've been lucky enough to find a queen ant this nuptial flight season, and want to know what your next step is to start your own ant colony, this ultimate in-depth tutorial will take you through all the basics of ant keeping, inform you on what to look out for, what you need and can expect, as well as answer your most frequently asked questions to start you out on the right path on your ant keeping journey. And also guys, Keep on watching until the end for our special AC Ant Farm Kit giveaway from AntsCanada.com. Now let me begin by saying if you look deep enough on this channel, I have a ton of helpful tutorials on a number of topics on ant keeping. It's actually how this channel started, so for all you OG subscribers to this channel, perhaps this video might feel nostalgic. I will try my best to compile everything you need to know about ant keeping in this one video. But after watching, feel free to also check out my full AC ant tutorial playlist here to deep dive into specific topics. Or even better, if you really want to become an ant keeping expert, I highly recommend you pick up our newly revised Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook ebook from our shop at AntsCanada.com, which for years has helped hundreds of thousands of aspiring ant keepers get started in the hobby and even has info on specific commonly kept ant species. All right, now let's get on to our first step, getting started in ant keeping. One of the most common questions I get from you guys is, what is a good beginner ant species? And my answer to that is, basically, whatever species of ant you commonly see outside your home. Growing up in Toronto, Canada, it would be pavement ants from the genus Tetramorium, carpenter ants from the genus Campanotus, black field ants from the genus Formica, and garden ants from the genus Laceus. Whatever ants you commonly find outside your home is already adapted to your weather conditions, water quality, food types, etc., which will make your ant keeping experience a lot easier. Plus, if you find them commonly outside, chances are finding a queen of those species will be easier. We never recommend buying ants online to be shipped to you from outside your country for a number of reasons, which I outline in another tutorial here. Plus, one of the advantages of keeping locally caught ants is if you can't keep them anymore for whatever reason, you can always release them with no negative impact on your local ecosystem or the ants. Okay, so to get started, you basically need a queen ant as she is the one to lay all the eggs and will keep your colony going for years. Now, there are three ways to get one. You can one, try digging up a colony with a queen from the wild which is the hardest option because the workers will hide the queen well, and plus you risk injuring the queen. Or two, you can try to catch a newly mated queen ant and start your colony from there, which personally is the best option. Or three, you can try visiting our Queen Ants for Sale section on our website, antscanada.com, which isn't a queen ant store, but rather a listing of real ant keepers in your city or region who are selling ant colonies in your city to people like you, looking for an ant colony with a queen. This is an ecologically and ethical option for sourcing your queen ant or ant colony with a queen. But let's assume you would like to start from scratch. The classic way to start by catching your queen ant. Here's how to do it. So every spring and summer, virgin reproductive queens and male ants, called elates, emerge from their nests and fly into the air and mate. Every species has their period in the year when they have these mating flights. During these mating flights, queens will mate with multiple males and then fall to the ground, break off their wings, and go off in search of a place to start their own colonies. The males die as they're no longer needed. So sad, but true. But your job is to try to find these mated queen ants 
preferably with wings broken off, though wing shedding isn't always an accurate indicator that the queens have mated, so if you find a queen ant with wings still, catch her, as she may break her wings off later, or even keep them on forever. Many people who might not be familiar with what a queen ant might look like might see a large worker ant and mistakenly think it's a queen. Basically, a queen ant is larger, has wing scars on her thorax, has a larger thorax than regular worker ants, and has a larger abdomen. I have tutorials on this channel on how to spot and distinguish queen ants from regular worker ants if you're having a hard time, so look that up in our tutorial playlist if you need to. Once caught, you need to place the queen into what is called a test tube setup, which will simulate the earthen burrow the queen would have made to begin her egg laying process. The test tube setup is basically a test tube with water sectioned off to one side of the test tube with cotton and another cotton ball plugging the opening of the test tube. This test tube setup will be the home of your colony for the next few months, or even up to over a year, depending on how fast your colony grows. We've got extra spacious test tubes that don't roll, specifically made for ant keeping at our shop if you need them. But if it's a dire emergency, you can also get water picks from your local florist only keep one queen per test tube, because though there are ant species that do tolerate multiple queens in a colony, setting up the conditions in a captive setup which allows for multi-queen colonies to happen is difficult. And chances are your queens will cooperatively raise their colony together for the first little while. But once the workers arrive, they'll kill each other. You only need one egg-laying queen to get started. So once your queen is in this test tube setup, the key now is to not disturb her as much as possible for the next few weeks. She needs to feel secure and preferably kept in the dark. I like to keep my incubating queen ants under some towels in a closet. It's the hardest thing to do not to check up on her every 10 minutes. Believe me, I know. But if you must, I would say checking up on her every three to four days is the maximum for now. Overstressing the queen at this stage could lead to her eating her brood, which you don't want. Now a lot of people ask, how long would it be before the queen lays eggs? And when will my first workers arrive? The answer to this depends on species and the temperature at which you keep the queen. If the test tube is kept warm in a warm room or garage, the time to egg laying and adult workers arriving is shorter. If kept in an air conditioned room, the time is longer. Queen ants can start laying immediately or may start laying eggs within the week. Now during this period, you don't want to feed the queen at all as she will be subsisting off muscle stores in her back wing muscles and also barfing up a self-made nutritious soup for her young until they are full grown adult worker ants. It may take anywhere between two to eight weeks for ants to go from egg to worker. So you really need to be patient. Keep them quiet, in the dark and away from any vibrations. So once you have a queen and a small family of workers, then what? When do you actually get to feed them? As a rule, I usually wait seven to 10 days after the first worker arrives before offering a colony food. A good indicator of whether or not the starting colony is ready to have their first meal is if the ants start to show signs of pulling at the cotton. It means they're trying to dig out of their founding chamber to look for the colony's first meal. So as a first meal, you can try feeding a tiny drop of sugar water administered by a toothpick and then later a cricket leg or crushed insect. I don't recommend you give them too large of a food item at this stage as the pioneering workers are a bit delicate and you could risk a mold outbreak in your test tube. Some freshly killed small insect or insect body part is the best option at this point after sugar water. So now that we're on this topic, let's talk about ant diet. Ants need two food types. They need carbs or sugars like sugar water, fruits, nectar, seeds, or honey, and they need a protein food source, usually feeder insects like crickets, mealworms, superworms, or feeder roaches. I don't recommend feeding insects caught outside as they can contain pesticides which would kill your ants. I once lost a whole colony by feeding a few flies caught outside. If live feeder insects freak you out, you can try cooked meats and fish, dog food, or fish flakes, but at some point, Ants really flourish when they have feeder insects to eat. So keep this in mind and experiment with a broad array of different foods. The colony also needs fresh water at all times, which in the beginning can be drunk from the cotton holding the water back in their test tube setup. Never use sugar water in your colony's test tube setup as the colony still needs fresh water. 
Plus the ants will inevitably defecate in your founding test tube setup. And if mixed with sugar water, this could lead to a disastrous bacterial or mold outbreak. So you have your colony in a test tube with many workers, but the water in your test tube is running out or it gets moldy. What do you do then? Well, you can attach a second test tube using tape, allowing air to enter by untaping every day. Or you can fixate a fresh test tube nearby. With a connecting chamber like this AC test tube portal, the ants will simply move the colony, queen, brood and all to the fresh test tube setup when they are ready. Just trust the ants will know when it's best to move. Don't force a move, as this can injure the queen and or brood. You can also start to offer the colony's food in this chamber. You'll see the ants will start treating the test tube like their nest and the chamber like an outdoor feeding area and garbage site. So once the colony is bigger, say at 50 to 100 workers strong, or even more if possible, the bigger the better, this is the best time to finally introduce your colony to their first proper ant farm. I waited until the Phoenix Empire, the fire ant colony on this channel, was a couple hundred workers strong before I finally introduced them to their first official ant farm. The danger with introducing your colony to an ant farm or large space too early is they might dry out, might not have enough worker power to properly thermoregulate or hydroregulate the babies, or get too spaced out in too large a space, which means less efficiency for the colony as a unit. One of the biggest mistakes ant keepers make is moving their ant colony into an ant farm too early. Now let's talk about housing. Let's talk ant farms. One of the most fun things is getting your ant colony all set up in their first ant farm. First off, let me issue a warning that gel farms are bad. Ant keepers know how bad gel farms are for ant colonies. They eventually break out in mold, don't contain proper nourishment for an ant colony, and are just all around bad for ants. If you have your ants in a gel farm right now, just simply replace the gel with digging medium and allow your ants to dig. There are many types of great ant farms, but basically they fall into three categories. Digging ant farms, like this AC ant tower, where the ants are given the liberty to dig tunnels and create chambers in a digging medium. Non-digging ant farms, like this AC hybrid nest, where the tunnels and chambers are made for them. Or terrariums, where you basically create a planted habitat and allow the ants to dig in the soil. You can also have hybrids of these three types. If your ant farm doesn't have a feeding area, you will need to connect the ant farm using tubes to a feeding area called an outworld, where you will place all the ants' food. The ants will leave their nest to collect the food from their outworld and dump all their garbage for you to clean up in their outworld. Each type of ant housing has its pros and cons, and it's basically up to the ant keeper which housing he or she prefers, as they each offer varying degrees of visibility, liberty for the ants' natural behaviors to be displayed, and offer different aesthetics. A good ant farm, though, is one that allows for a moisture gradient, meaning an area that is a bit more moist and an area that is a bit more dry, has at least minimal ventilation, and is escape-proof. Speaking of which, now to address how to contain the ants. Ant keepers use ant barriers to keep their ants in their setups, particularly in terrariums and outworlds with an open top. You can use a layer of petroleum jelly, baby powder mixed with rubbing alcohol, which dries and becomes super slippery for ants, or this stuff, called PTFE, or Fluon. I prefer to use baby powder mixed with rubbing alcohol, which I smother on the bottom of AC Outworld lips, or can be painted along the top of terrariums. And finally, let's talk maintenance. Ants are considered super low maintenance in the beginning when they're in a test tube, limited to simply feeding and cleaning garbage up once or twice a week. But once they get into the thousands, duties start to pick up. Continue to offer the colony as much food as they will eat without tons of it laying around in their ant farm or outworld to keep mold outbreaks at bay. A few feeder insects a week is good for a small colony, along with fresh water and sugar water offered in a test tube 24 seven. If you keep your colony warmer than room temperature, they'll grow much faster. Clean up the garbage once a week by spot cleaning, water their ant farm periodically if it dries out, and expand your setup as the colony gets bigger. If you want to slow down your ant colony's growth rate and don't want them to reach into the millions, simply lower the temperature they're kept at and limit how much food you give them. I regulate temperature by adjusting the thermostat of the room they're kept in. 
or you can use heating cables to heat up sections of their nest. Don't place the ant farm in direct sunlight, as you will cook the ants. Just a note that if you live in an area that has winter, the ants will enter a dormant state by late fall, at which point you can simply keep them in a cold place of your home. You don't need to feed them, but you will need to make sure they have water at all times, and just enjoy the ant keeping break until spring when they start to wake up again. I actually love that with ant keeping in a temperate climate, you can take a yearly break from the ants, which keeps the hobby fresh year after year. Some say hibernating your ants prolongs the queen's life, so it's best to keep your colony cold in the winter. By the way, your colony could live as long as 30 years, depending on the species. If you have black crazy ants like our Dark Knights, they live and breed healthily forever within an enclosed ant farm. Overall, ants are super rewarding pets, and I am positive if you give them a try, they'll surely offer you many hours of discovery, wonder, and satisfaction. I hope this tutorial helped answer all of your questions, but if you still have questions, feel free to watch more ant tutorials on this channel. Ants have taught me some very valuable lessons in life, including the importance of patience, responsibility, and persistence. Keeping ants, as you may have seen on this channel, can shed a lot of amazing insight, not only on the world of biology, but also on our own world, on ourselves. If you snoop around and watch a few more videos on this channel, you'll see just how mind-blowing and interesting the secret world of ants really is. But I won't spoil it for you. Try it for yourselves. Once you get your first ant colony going, thriving and operating in your first epic ant farm, you'll understand why millions of people have fallen in love with the hobby and these amazing little creatures we call ants. Thank you for watching and best of luck on your ant keeping experience. It's ant love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's tutorial episode? Hope this video inspires more of you to join me in this amazing educational hobby. And if so, and or if you haven't yet, do smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload because I think notifications are broken again. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC in our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to see some updated footage of the Phoenix Empire, my current fire ant colony, which is the biggest ant colony I own today, go check them out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what makes this future fire ant home so special among all other terrariums we've ever built before on this channel? Congratulations to Li Ming, who answered, the whole AC family is building it together, pole by pole. Congratulations, Li Ming. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is a nuptial flight? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could win a free AC ant tower small deluxe kit plus ultimate ant keeping handbook ebook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's ant love forever. <laughs>